Hey guys, it's Sakara, and today we're going to be going over my Stamina Sorcerer build for the Fire Song chapter. Before we get started, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. We just passed 3,000 subs, and I want to start making our way to that 4K mark. So if you don't mind, I would really appreciate it. But I've, I've been really enjoying this build a lot in PvP. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's not the most practical thing in the world, but honestly, the fun I've had on this thing is so worth it and i definitely recommend it if you just want to try something new and just really enjoy yourself while pvping so guys without further ado let's get on with the video all right guys let's get started first things first we're going to look at our character sheet we're going to be an imperial on our stamp sork i really like imperial as the class for this because of the reduced cost passive that you get from it that way it's really going to help your sustain a lot so I really like Imperial for this. Uh, you really don't need to stand on a Stamp Sword besides that because of your Dark Deal and stuff like that. So doing this is probably the best race that you can go for this build. Uh, also, uh, probably Khajiit will be a good build as well, but I just have this as Imperial already, so I'm just going to stick with that. So if you, if you do not have Imperial, I will probably go Khajiit on this character. Our attributes are going to break down like this, 59 points into stamina and then 5 points into health to give us a nice 31k max health pool and a 25.6k max stamina pool. And then also your max magic is 16.8, so that's pretty damn high, I gotta say. Our Mundus is going to be the lady to help our resistances. We've got enough damage on this build, we've got enough healing on this build. We're slightly squishy when we don't have this on, so this really helps out a lot, and I definitely recommend using this. If you feel like you're already tanky enough, go ahead and try a weapon damage uh, one on, but I definitely recommend this one. For our food, we're going to be using our Zorga Smoked Bear Haunch. This is going to help with our max health and our sustain. This is going to help our, uh, give us max health of... 4,300, and then it's also going to increase our stamina magic recovery by 369, so that's pretty dope. Also, as always, if you can't afford this, just use the Jewels of Misrule food. It is just a little bit less max health, and it is so much cheaper. And then, as always, Vampire Stage 3, that Undeath passive is absolutely massive. It's basically built in Pariah, so the less health you have, the less damage you take. So it is absolutely massive. Please, please, please be Vampire Stage 3. Our gear is going to break down like this. Our monster set is going to be Maris Lock. So what this does is the one piece gives you max stamina, and then the two piece is when you deal damage with a melee heavy attack, you spew a cone of corruption dealing 6,000 disease damage to enemies over 4 seconds, and that damage is increased by 10% per each the negative effect the enemy has on them for up to maximum of 300, 300%. And then it's also uh, it can only occur once every 10 seconds, so that's fine. Uh, I really like this because of the amount of negative effects that we can stack onto people. It is absolutely massive. The damage that you get for this is really, really, really good. And I think just seeing that 6k is not even really compared to how hard it's actually hitting. So I really like this. Our helmet is going to be a medium impen. And then our shoulder is going to be a light impen. And then we're going to have prismatic enchants on all of our gear, as you can see. So I'm not even going to go over that anymore. This is going to ha having prismatic enchants on everything is going to increase your max health, stem and magic as high as possible. Our chest piece is going to be a heavy ancient dragon guards Karis in reinforced. Wait, the reason why we're using ancient dragon guard is because of the two piece gives you max health. The three piece weapon and spell damage, the four piece crit chance. Then the five piece is you have 289 weapon and spell damage while your health is above 50%. But when it's below 50%, you get an extra 3,339 physical and spell resistance. So that is really good for your damage. And then it's going to really helpful for your tankiness when you're at lower health. So again, we're going to be using, <laughs> sorry. So again, we're going to be using Ancient Dragon Guard as heavy for our, and reinforced for our chest piece. For our legs, we're going to be using heavy reinforced as well. Our hands are going to be medium impen. Our waist piece is going to be medium impen, and then our feet are going to be medium impen as well. Our jewelry is going to be two-piece trainee, so our necklace is going to be trainee with a swift trade on it and a weapon damage enchant. And then one of our rings is also going to be trainee with swift and a weapon damage enchant on it as well. If you want to use infused for these two because Stamp Sork is pretty fast, it'll make you hit harder. I definitely recommend it if you want to do that. 
And then also our other myth, our mythic on this build and our other ring is going to be an infused Death Dealer's Fate uh, ring with the weapon damage enchant on it as well. And what Death Dealer's does is when you're in combat, every two seconds you're going to get a stack of Escalating Fate, which is going to increase your max health, stam, and magic by 88. And then you can get a maximum of up to 30. So I think that evens out to a little bit over 2k, almost 3k. So that really helps your overall tankiness because you're just going to have more of each stat. And I really liked it the most out of any mythic on this build. You can run sea serpents if you want to, to help your damage. But personally, that snare lately has been absolutely killing me. I do not like it. So I've been doing death dealers instead, and I really do like that instead. Our front bar weapons are going to be Master's Perfected Dual Wield Axes. Our main hand is going to be Nernhoned. Our off hand is going to be Sharpened. And what this does is the Perfected line gives you crit. And then the two-piece item is your Twin Slashes deal 1,635 more damage for each initial hit of the initial attack and the bleed. So that is really good damage. And I really like it. I think Master's Perfected Dual Wield is one of the best sets in the game right now. And it's really helpful to put this on a lot of your builds. Our back bar is going to be Vanishron Perfected Ice Staff. In the defending trait, the Perfected Lion gives you extra offensive pen. And then the actual ability itself is casting weakness to elements, puts a tether between you and your target. And then every second, that tether is going to do either uh, flame damage, shock damage, or frost damage. And it is really good extra damage to add to your pressure on an enemy. It is really good and it really is overwhelming after a certain point. Point. And between your Vatishron, between your Masters, and between the Marisolok, you are just doing so much free damage between those three things. I absolutely love it. And then onto our skills. Let's do our front bar first. Uh, this is going to be Blood Craze as your main spammable. That is going to be part of your Masters Perfected Dual Wield. This is going to give them a nice little bleed over time, but I also just spam this a lot in the fight because this is just one of your... You don't really want to spam Execute, so if you could just weave your Crystal Weapon into your Blood Crazes, you're doing a lot of damage. And then we're going to have Camel Hunter to increase our Major Savagery and Major Prophecy, so it's going to increase your weapon and spell critical by 2,600. And then you're also getting Minor Berserk for 5 seconds after dealing critical damage from an enemy's flank, so that happens pretty often, and it really just gets your damage up really high. And you want your crit up high on this build, trust me. Crystal Weapon, you're going to be having this also as your main spammable. So you weave, you use this, and then you hit this, then you use this, and you use this. Going back and forth between the two is your best source of initial damage before you're getting your enemy to the execute phase. Uh, Whirling Blades, this is going to be your execute. Only use this when your enemy is in execute. Do not use this before that, or you will be using a lot of stamina. I do not recommend doing this above 50%. I usually start doing Whirling Blades at about 30%. That way you really finish that kill off properly. And then our last ability on our front bar is going to be Streak. This is going to basically be your way to get out of a situation, to CC your enemy. This ability is very... Uh, it's got a lot of different uses, so I definitely like this a lot. Um, it also does a little bit of damage, so it helps with your burst. My favorite way to burst somebody on this build, I'll break it down for you real quick after I go over the ultimate, which is going to be Shooting Star. Uh, this is going to be your ultimate from the Mage's Guild line because uh, you have your... What is this? This and DK are the only two really unblockable CCs, right? I think Nightblade is Sphere too. Anyways, uh, so since you have Streak and they can't block that CC, I like using Shooting Star because that is just absolutely free damage. I tried to use Dawnbreaker, but I missed every two seconds. I hated it. So I use this. I dot somebody up by using Blood Craze, uh, Crystal Weapon, and then I dot them up with like Ellie's Susceptibility because of the uh, Vatishron Perfected Ice Staff we have on our back bar. And then you hit them with that. You activate Shooting Star, then you Streak or it right away, and then you start hitting Whirling Blades. And that combo is nasty. I'm absolutely loving it so much lately. 
And then back bar, our abilities are going to be crit surge. This is going to be your source of major brutality. So it's going to increase your weapon and spell damage by 20% for 33 seconds. And then on top of that, while it's active, dealing critical damage heals you for uh, 3,600 health. And it can happen once every second. So it is pretty, it's a pretty nice ability to use. It's really good to be able to have that active. And then while you're pressuring somebody, you're just healing yourself too. So it's a really good way to just make sure that you're continuing to go offensive at all times. Our source of major resolve is going to be Hurricane. I mean, this is a stamp store, guys. Of course, we're going to be using Hurricane. So you're getting major resolve and minor expedition. So it's going to increase your physical and spell resistance by 6k. And it's also going to increase your movement speed by 15%. And then also, if you crit with this, it's going to activate your crit surge too. So, you know, extra healing too when it when it when it goes off properly. And then one of your main heals is Resolving Vigor. This is going to be your nice little heal over time for five seconds. And then also you're going to get a source of minor resolve on this. So it's going to increase your physical and spell resistance by 3k for 20 seconds as well. And then another one of your main heals and your main source of sustain is going to be Dark Deal. So you basically lose magic, but you gain 9k health and 3600 stam right away. And it is really nice to use. It can be interrupted though. So try and get into the habit of using this right after you get CC'd. That way you can't be interrupted and you just get free resources back. And then our last skill on our back bar is gonna be Ellie's Susceptibility. They changed this this patch. So you still get major breach on an enemy, so you're reducing your enemy's physical and spell resistance by 6k. But on top of that, you're uh, you're also putting three status effects on them every six seconds. Uh, so it is absolutely amazing for your damage. Being able to put the burning, chilled, and concussion status effects on your enemy is... I can't even stress how amazing that is now. This ability is so good. And... It's going to be even better once I explain the champion points too. So I really like this a lot. And our back bar is going to be Summon Charge Atronach. Uh, this is just a nice little AoE to have. And it's a nice little source of being able to use line of sight around something if you're in an open field. That way, uh, in case you know, you're fighting too many people and you just need something to line of sight around real quick, you can just drop that and they could just target that accidentally. And it's really huge. And then I was going to talk about this for our, like, when I was talking about the Ellie susceptibility change. Focus Mending, great. Use that as one of your slottables. But Force of Nature, that's what I'm talking about. Increases your offensive penetration by 660 for every status effect your target has. So that is three things from Ellie susceptibility in itself. And then also hemorrhaging from Blood Craze as well. So that's four things right there. Your penetration is getting so high on your enemies just because of this. I love it so much. Uh, Mastered Arms. This is going to increase your damage done with direct damage attacks by 6%. Ironclad reduces your damage taken from direct damage attacks by 6%. And then our red slotables are Pain's Refuge. St sustained by Suffering. Survival Instincts. And Celerity. Our green slotables are Rationer, Liquid Efficiency, Gifted Rider, and Warm Out. But also what's important, as always, is Breakfall in your uh, green passives. And that's it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, liking the video really helps me a lot. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, please do so. It really helps me out so much. We just passed 3,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is absolutely massive. I appreciate that so much. But that really helps me. We're trying to move on to that 4K mark. So one by one, we can get there. So guys, thank you so much for supporting. You guys have been absolutely phenomenal. It, it means the absolute world to me. If you want to see this build live in action, help me over on twitch.tv forward slash the car. Helps me out a lot. We stream five days a week. So if you want to come by, you know, check out the builds that we're rocking there and see, you know, how the process is made of, coming down to these exact builds that we put on the youtube you know come on uh, and stop by uh, the, the twitch again that's twitch.tv forward slash shakar guys i'm done rambling that's it that's the video hope you guys enjoy it and i'll see you guys on the next one later